Helen from HypnoFit and today I want to talk about something that so many people have this particular issue which is they continue to get disappointed by the people in their lives and if this is you and you can relate to to this particular topic you need to listen to this live video okay so what happens why do we get disappointed with the people that are in our lives basically what is happening is that we are expecting them to behave like we would behave so we have certain values and certain standards in our life what are our values our values are whatever is important to us that's what our values are and so we figure this is important and so if this is important to me it needs to be important to you and if I'm prepared to do it, you should be prepared to do it too. And what happens? What happens is those people don't do it. Those people do not live up to your expectations. And there's a reason for that. And the reason is they are not you. <laughs> so I'll say that again. They are not you. They can't think like you. For something that seems really obvious to you, so this is something that you do a lot, for instance, you always go out of your way to do something for a particular person and you can't understand as to why that other person is not doing the same thing. I often have this situation with clients who come to HypnoFit where, for instance, they're always the ones doing something for their, for their parents and their siblings don't. And so I'm always hearing that story. It's always me. It's always left to me. I'm the one who has to look after mom. I'm the one who has to take her to appointments. I'm the one who checks up on her. You know, there are four of us in the family and I'm the only one that needs to do that. Why is it always me? Why, why, why? Because people are different. And so why are we different? We're different because we've had different experiences. Even siblings in the same family have got a different value system because they have been brought up differently. Even with the same parents, they've been brought up differently. And that's because according to where they sit in the family, where they sit in the family tree, whether they're the eldest, the middle child, the youngest, also where their parents were at that time in their life. It could be that with the eldest, they expected more of them, they gave them more responsibility, and they were not the same with the other kids. So for whatever reason, we all, as people, have different values. We all have different experiences. We all see things from a different filtering system. And so because we see our world within a different filtering system, we react to our world in a completely different way. And so two people cannot see the same thing. For instance, if there is a car accident outside, there isn't, but if there was and there were 10 people watching that car accident you can bet there would be 10 different versions of what actually happened and that's because our brain our human brain cannot possibly get all the information that's required it cannot possibly see everything feel everything know everything sense everything it's a, there's a filtering system there is hundreds of thousands of bits of information that come into our brain but it's filtered through our belief system our experiences and our values and at the end of it there are certain bits of information we don't even see it's like when you um when you go into your pantry you know something's there but you can't see it you can't see it it's there but you can't see it because there's only so much information we can grasp. So we delete information, we distort information according to our values, our emotions, our belief systems. And all of this means that at the end of the day, we don't see the true picture. And therefore, no two people can see this, the same situation in the same way. So when you think about it, when you're having an argument with somebody else, and you want to prove that you're right and they're convinced that they're right, there is no right. They're both convinced they're right. There is no right. So trying to convince them to see things a different way when they have a completely different filtering system is not really useful. So given that you know that people will never react to the situation the same way that you react to the situation, given that you know that people can never meet your expectations, and they will always let you down 
because that's your expectations and that's the way you choose to live your life, it's not their choice, then you need to be prepared to either be hurt or to feel angry because people are always letting you down. And so what do you need to do? What do you need to do to ensure that you don't get let down? You need to let it go. You need to let go of expectations. So the way that I say it to my clients is that if you really want to do something for someone, do it from your heart. Really do it from your heart. Hey, Jordan. Hey, gorgeous, beautiful girl. Good to see you on the line today. Or don't do it at all. So you either, you either do something for someone else from your heart and truly expect nothing back. Truly expect nothing back. Or you don't do it. And that way you're not resentful about doing it. That's your choice. Your choice is to either do it or not to do it. But don't expect others to do as you would do. It's just not practical, nor is it realistic. So you've just got to let things go. You've got to just do the best that you are prepared to do for other people and stop feeling resentful for the fact that others are not also doing what you're prepared to do. Jordan is saying this message is much needed for me right now. Yeah, gorgeous, because that's why you're, and you know, that's why you're on the call right now. There's a reason that your angels have brought you onto this call. It's because you needed to hear this message right now. And that message is, is that you need to let things go. Operate from a heartfelt space and expect nothing back. And so this is good in theory, but when you really do apply this in your life in a practical way, this is life-changing and transformational. And there is so much freedom in not expecting others to do as you would do. There's so much freedom in that because you don't feel hurt and you don't feel angry because you just get that that's them and this is me. And people are different. So for instance, you know, in my group of friends, it's usually me that organizes all my catch-ups. Does that mean they don't care about me? Does that mean that I love them more than they love me? No, it just means that that's who I am. I'm the organizer and they're not. And if I enjoy being in their company, then that's what I need to do is organize the catch-ups. I don't need to expect them to do it. I do what makes me happy, which is to organize the catch-ups. So when you really live this as your mantra, where you will not make expectations or claims on other people, that you just live your life with freedom and with peace of mind, then your life will change because people can't let you down because you have no expectations of them. And what you will find is that when you let go of expectations of other people, your energy will change and you will have a higher vibe and people will want to be connected to you and will want to be around you because your vibe is higher. So let's just do a quick recap, which is people will always let you down because they are not you. They don't carry your value system. They haven't had your experience. By that I mean they haven't lived your life and had your particular experience. They don't have your emotions. They can't filter their reality the way that you filter your reality because we all have a different filtering system. And so that's why they can never behave like you because they're not you. We're all different. And what do we need to do? We need to let it go. Just let it go. Don't expect anything from anyone. People are doing the best they can with the resources they've got at that particular time. You do what you can and you do it from a place of love. So this is what Jordan is saying. I borrowed money to someone. They begged and promised to pay me back. And just now I found out they used it for drugs. I feel so stupid. I need to let it go, but I just feel so stupid. I understand that, Jordan. So what Jordan is saying is that she lent some money to somebody who, who promised they would pay it back and they didn't. And so, you know, with those kind of situations, we need, we need to have our boundaries and know what is okay and what is not okay. Because 
with drug addicts, you know, I, I have had personal experiences with drug addicts as well. And um, the drug is greater than their value system. And their value system has changed and their standards have changed. And they are prepared to do anything to get their hit. Um, but not only that, it may not even be someone who's on drugs. It could be somebody else altogether for a completely different reason. If you don't, you, you are not obligated to lend your money to anyone else unless, unless you really feel it's right and it's coming from, from your heart. So what Jordan is saying is that she's also mad at herself for contributing to her having relapsed. You didn't contribute, Jordan, because if your friend did not get the money from you, she would have got it from someone else. So you did not contribute. It's not, it's not your responsibility, not your responsibility at all. So she swore she was sober and that she had gotten a new job. I had no idea that she was lying to me. Yeah. And I guess now you do know, and you've learned that that's what people do and um but on the same token it's not what all people do just some people and so you've got to trust your gut because usually I, I would bet jordan that your gut told you that something was amiss because we know our senses know what's going on so if you rely on your heart instead of your head i would suggest that you knew you knew that something was wrong am i right that you knew that uh, she was lying to you so um, there's no point beating yourself up. You are not responsible for somebody else taking drugs. Absolutely not. <laughs> so if she didn't get it from you, she would have got it from someone else. That's for sure. And the next thing is, is you know now that you need to tighten your boundaries about what is okay and what is not okay. So everything we experience is a learning experience and it's going to elevate us to the next level. And so I hope that's been helpful. And um, if there's anything else that I can do for you guys, you just send me an email at helen at helenmidas.com. Or if you would like a complimentary consultation with our client success manager, Deborah Moglia, if you call 1300 797 622, 1300 797 622, she's happy to chat with you to see how hypnosis and hypnotherapy can help you make the best decisions for you. Okay, see you later.